If you're watching this video, chances are you're probably not that happy with how the last six months have gone. So how can you make the next six months the best of your life? In my opinion, there's just three things you need to do, and the very first one starts with ignoring every single person around you. What's up guys, Alex Hine here over at Modern Health Monk. Before we jump in, check out the free download below this video. I've put together a free journaling worksheet that can help you figure out really what you want from life and how to make it happen. So check it out right below this video. Now, step one, in my opinion, is ignoring what your friends want. The irony of trying to get ahead and achieve more than everyone is not just achieving more. It's making sure what you're actually achieving is what you actually want. I am shocked by the number of people that are so caught up in trying to have the most followers in Instagram, even though they will self-admit they don't even like Instagram. I'm shocked by the number of people that will say, you know, oh, they're competitive with their classmates about who's getting into medical school, and they're already not even that excited about going to it, but it's gonna make daddy proud. What do you actually want? You know, so much of what we do when we don't have a strong sense of self-identity, we are not following our North Star, we've become disconnected from our own compass, is that we just do what we see everyone else doing. That's why I think little kids and high schoolers are so attracted to what is popular. I think kids, before they go into adulthood, just like what other people like, not even because it's what they like, because they don't have a strong sense of their own identity, which is you don't know who you are, you don't know what you want, you don't know what kind of life is aligned with your passions and interests and really your desires. So the first thing, in my opinion, to get ahead of 99% of people is to figure out who you are and what you want, which means ignoring the status quo. Doing what other people want is never gonna be the route to being successful because it doesn't matter how much you succeed if you're on the wrong path. The second habit I would say is to pick one core time block every day towards your number one goal. So this is something that is measurable and tangible. I can't even tell you, I mean, when I wrote my first book, Master of the Day, I had a lot of friends that wanted to write books, right? And they would send little jabs out. They'd be like, oh yeah, I wanna, I'm gonna write a book too. And cool, I mean, everyone wants to write a book, fine. The difference though, was that I decided that I'm gonna come up with one ritual, which is every night at 7 p.m. when I'm done with work and I get out of the gym, I'm gonna to go to a favorite cafe and I'm just gonna write for one hour before I go to dinner. So that became my ritual. Monday through Friday, every night after my nine to five job, I would go to the gym and go to the same cafe to write for an hour. And on the weekends, I would go to that same cafe when I had more leisure time and I had more time. So instead of me being just another schmuck that wants to write a book, just another, another bro that wants to upload YouTube videos, just another entrepreneur, I realized that if I had one core time block for that dedicated goal per day, it was likely to actually come true. So the net result was that in six months, I had written the first draft of that book and within a year it was published. Now I've since done that multiple times and I plan to write 30 more books in my lifetime. But what is quintessential is understanding that all my other friends wanted to write books too and zero of them have. And I'm not that special. The only difference was that I recognized that putting in a time block every day towards a number one goal will guarantee that you make progress. It doesn't mean all your wildest dreams are gonna happen. It just means you're gonna make some progress towards that goal. Now, whatever that goal is for you, this will work. If it's athletics, an hour a day in training or studying your game. If it's chess, an hour a day of playing or studying your game. If you are in a graduate program, then maybe it's one, two, or three hours a day of studying. That's the single one thing that's going to be the inflection point that's gonna change the game for you. So what is your number one goal and what is your time block and when? Now the third thing is to figure out your prime directive. I read a really interesting book by David Bach and I think it was called something like Smart Couples Finish Rich. And it's basically on married and relationship couple dynamics in money and how people view money. Now, what was really interesting is that he said, you know, one thing I see that is the main cause of these relationship squabbles with money is that people don't understand that money is primarily emotional, go figure, and it's primarily based on your values. So someone that was raised in poverty views typically money as security. And so they're less likely to want to stereotypically spend it. They want to earn money and they want to be frugal because money is security. Now you can also have that programming if you have different life experience, but some people 
Money is stability and security and safety. So they don't want to spend it and they want to keep their expenses low and they don't want the risk. But for other people, money is about living life, right? To have a lot of money means you can travel all the time and eat out at the nice restaurants and have a lot of opportunities in life. And so for that person, they gain value and self-esteem through spending money, not through the saving it and investing of it and seeing it pile up. So what happens when you get two people together is one wants to save because having money is safety. One wants to spend because spending money is living life. And when they're together, they are at conflict, in conflict all the time. But my point here is simple. What do you value in life, right? These aren't about what's right and wrong. It's just about what you value. If you don't know what you value and what you want out of life, then it doesn't matter how fast you're going down the road. If it's still the wrong road, you're just gonna end up in the wrong destination faster. So what is your prime directive, meaning what are your values and what do you actually want from your life? Think about that before you're trying to make 10 times faster progress down the wrong road and ending up in the wrong city. So those are three things that I think can make a big difference in your day-to-day -day life in terms of making progress and feeling fulfilled at the end of the day. Check out the journaling worksheet I've put together, guys. It'll help you also clarify what you want and how to get your life together. And I'll see you soon.